Let's look at negative strand RNA viruses. We're going to look at negative and then double strand. Negative strand, uh, there are viruses with one RNA and there are viruses with segmented RNAs. And the scheme is pretty much similar. Uh, they come in, the negative strand comes in, it has to come in with a polymerase so it can be copied to form mRNAs. Uh, and in both cases, you will see the mRNAs are not complete copies of the viral negative strand genome. So the virus then, to make new genomes, has to make a complete plus strand full length complement. So we'll look first at the um, non-segmented RNA viruses. An example of this is VSV, which gets in by endocytosis. The genome gets into the cytoplasm. It is an RNA protein complex, negative strand RNA with the polymerase attached. And the polymerase can then make individual messenger RNAs. All right, you can see individual messengers which encode all of the individual proteins. These messenger RNAs are not complete copies of the genome. So to make more genomes, you have to make a full length plus mRNA and from it make negative strands. Okay, so you see the conundrum here. If you're going to make individual messenger RNAs, which is an acceptable strategy to get multiple proteins from a single RNA genome, then you have to have an extra step in replication. You're going to have to make this extra full length plus strand. <clears throat> So here's a schematic of the virion. You've seen this quite a bit now. Here's the nucleocapsid. Here's the complete virion with the envelope. So again, the negative strand genome is complex with proteins, including the polymerase. Uh, as it comes into cells, that immediately begins making, begins making individual mRNAs, one, two, three, four, five, and each of them encode a single protein. They're capped and they're polyadenylated. But again, these are not complete copies of the genome, so you have to go through a full length copy in order to make more uh, genomes. Here's another view of this. We've got the negative strand genome right here in this, this uh, olive color, the negative strand genome RNA. This comes in the cell, and the first thing that happens is you make mRNAs. One, two, three, four, five mRNAs, which each encode a different protein. Now, after an hour or two or three hours of this, you have a lot of proteins in the cell, you have to start thinking about making virions. So you have to make genomes. And you can't make a genome from these mRNAs. They're too short. So what happens is the, the virus begins to switch to what's called replication. It makes a plus strand full length copy. And then from that, it makes a negative strand. Now, what controls whether the virus is making mRNA or full length plus RNAs? Well, it turns out it's the level of this N protein. So the N protein is that protein that coats the RNA and, and makes it have helical symmetry. Early in infection, well, when the virus first gets into the cell, there's no N protein present, and so all the synthesis is messenger RNA. But as N proteins rise, they begin to coat the products, as the plus strand products as they are made, and that causes them to be elongated. There, you could look at the N protein as an anti-terminator because instead of terminating after each mRNA, the presence of N protein makes you get full length plus strands. So here's how that works on a single gene basis. Here again is the viral RNA. When the viral RNA comes into the cell, the polymerase is already attached to it. It begins to copy the first gene, which is the N gene, makes an N RNA, and then it stops. There's an intergenic region. It says to the polymerase, stop, and then it begins making an mRNA for the next one. In the presence of N protein, this termination at the intergenic region is antagonized, so you make a full length plus strand. Now, how does polyadenylation work? Right, each of these mRNAs is polyadenylated, and the cap, the cap also is encoded by the, is attached by the viral RNA polymerase, but what about the poly A sequence? So here is, a, is the sequence of, the, of one of these intergenic regions. So here's the negative strand genomic RNA. And the polymerase is just finishing copying uh, the first gene and making an mRNA. And in this intergenic region, there is a stretch of U's. And when the polymerase hits this, it begins to stutter. It sits in place and churns out A's. And that is basically what polyadenylates the RNA. After about 200 A's, uh, the enzyme stops making A sequences and terminates. This is actually a, a termination signal right here, the NA. Uh, and then it immediately begins to make a new mRNA. So it releases this one, and now it initiates a new one here. You see the cap has been placed on, 
uh, to this mRNA is the G, M, M7G cap, PPPA, and then it's making the next mRNA. So that's how they're initiated, and that's how uh, the poly A is added to each one. Okay, so that's a virus with a long negative stranded RNA genome. So the way it can access individual proteins, it's got to make one, more than one protein. The way it does that is to make independent messenger RNAs. And then if you do that, you're stuck with having to make a full-length complement to replicate your genome. So you have to have some timing mechanism to switch between uh, mRNAs and full-length plus strands, and the NP protein is it. And you'll see for flu it's the same, except this is a segmented genome. Now this looks very complicated, but in fact, there are just a couple of features that we need to look at here. Influenza virus binds sialic acid receptors. It's taken up by endocytosis. We talked last time about the beautiful pH-dependent fusion mechanism that liberates the RNAs. And remember, these are negative strand RNAs, so they get uh, put into the cell with proteins bound to them. Those RNAs go into the nucleus. Very unusual for an RNA virus. This one wants to go in the nucleus. And in the nucleus, those RNAs are templates for mRNAs. And eventually, they become templates for the production of new genomes through a full-length uh, plus-stranded intermediate. So let's see how that works. So here's influenza virus. A nice cutaway here. You can see the individual ribonucleoprotein pieces. Each of these is a protein and RNA all coiled up. And the virion has eight RNAs. You can see them here, one through eight. And each of them codes for one or two proteins. <clears throat> and uh, each of these RNAs, when it gets into the cell, when it gets into the nucleus, is copied to form an mRNA, which is shown here. It's a capped and polyadenylated mRNA. So you can see eight virion RNAs, eight messenger RNAs. And each of them get translated into one or two proteins. And here in the first segment, there's a frame shift that occurs to make two proteins from the same mRNA. And these um, two, last two segments, seven and eight, their mRNAs are actually spliced to give a different RNA to, to make a different protein. So there's, this virus is expanding the coding capacity of its genome by splicing. All right, so let's see how this happens and what the caveats are. And this is a diagram very much like the one we just saw for VSV, the, the negative strand RNA. So here's the influenza virus genome right here, negative strand genome RNA. Um, this comes into the cell with proteins attached to it, including the RNA polymerase. Right? Remember, it's negative stranded. It has to do this. Those enzymes, that RNA polymerase, copies this negative strand RNA and makes an mRNA. And that's shown at the top here. It's a capped and polyadenylated RNA. That's for each segment, you make an mRNA, and that gets translated into a protein. Now, this mRNA cannot be copied to make a negative strand genome. Remember, we always have this conundrum. We have to make mRNAs, but we also need to copy the RNA from end to end. This mRNA is not a complete copy of the vRNA for two reasons. First of all, the 5' prime end has extra sequences on it that are derived from the cell. And we'll see how that happens in a moment. The 3' prime end is, falls about 20 nucleotides short uh, of the genomic RNA segment. So it's not a complete copy, and therefore you have to make a full-length plus strand in order to make more genomes. Very much like VSV, except a little more subtle. VSV, remember, made a lot of small mRNAs, so there was clearly no way to make a genome out of those. But uh, this one, the, the difference between mRNA and, and the full-length plus strand copy is more subtle. Now, the <clears throat> synthesis of mRNAs that happens when these negative strands come in the cell requires a primer. And the primer is a piece of host cell mRNA. What the virus does, it carries, it carries an enzyme in the particle that goes to a cell mRNA and cuts it about 10 or 13 nucleotides from the 5' end. And then it takes the cap plus those 10 to 13 bases and uses it as a primer to make its mRNAs. So this is a primer-dependent RNA polymerase, and the primer is host cell sequence. So every flu mRNA has, at its 5' end, 10 to 13 sequences from the host cell or bases from the host cell. So as I said, the 3' end falls short of the genome. So in order to 
replicate, you have to make a full length plus strand. And the, the control, the switch between mRNA synthesis and making full length plus strands is the same as it was for VSV for the negative strand viruses with long genomes. It's the level of this NP protein. Uh, when that rises after enough NP mRNAs have been translated, it then anti-terminates so that this plus strand RNA goes all the way to the 3 prime end. In addition, uh, the synthesis of this full length plus strand is, is unprimed. It doesn't require a capped primer, so there's no cap in cellular sequences at the end of this. So this is now a bona fide full length plus stranded copy of the viral genome. It can then be copied to a negative strand, and these en end up uh, into the virions. Okay, so again, you're making short mRNAs, so that necessitates a different mechanism for making uh, genomes. Now, the priming step is very cool. The mRNA synthesis of influenza virus depends on primers derived from the host cell. So remember, I told you the, the virus particle, as it comes in, not only has an RNA polymerase, but it has an enzyme in it that cuts host cell mRNAs around 13 bases in. So here's the cap. There are about 13 bases. Any, any sequence will do. It doesn't matter. It just takes it, whatever mRNAs and get, cuts them up. And then this piece that it's cut off, it uses as a primer for synthesis of mRNAs. Here's a negative strand viral RNA. You get a little uh, hybridization here and then you use this as a primer. So the polymerase uses that cap fragment as a primer and elongates the mRNA. So that's why I say all the viral mRNAs have at their five prime ends some cellular sequence. Uh, the enzyme that copies the genome is shown here. It's a complex of three proteins. And here in the olive color is the genomic RNA. And you can see it's bound to the enzyme at two sites. Here's the active site of the enzyme. And what we think happens here is that the three prime end is recognized initially by the active sites. And it's drawn through the active site. And at, as it's being drawn through, the plus strand mRNA is being made. So typically, we think of an enzyme moving down a template, right? But here we think the enzyme stays put and the RNA gets dragged through. Now, because there is a binding site for the virion RNA in the polymerase, eventually when this molecule gets dragged all the way through, it can't be pulled anymore, all right? And this has to be released. But before it does, the polymerase stalls, and there is a U sequence right here near the five prime end of the virion RNA. And then that polyadenylates that causes polyadenylation. So now you see why mRNAs fall short of the virion RNA, because the polymerase can't copy this, this part up here. It's, uh, it's attached and it won't let go. So this uh, uh, RNA, mRNA that's made gets polyadenylated by this stuttering mechanism, then gets released. So it falls short of the 5 prime end. So apparently, this mechanism of polyadenylation causes a loss of sequence. and so. Again, to make genomes, you have to compensate for that. 